Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. on Monday, the 18th of November, and certainly want to welcome all of you that are here with us this evening. If we just take a moment for a silent meditation, please. Thank you. That's Councilman Brown. Uh, I was going to ask Councilman Brown to introduce Faith to do the pledge. Uh, good evening. Uh, tonight, Faith Jones will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. She is Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Councilmember Brown. Here. Councilmember Katati. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. And Councilmember Shule. Here. All right, thank you. Let me ask are there announcements by members of the council? Any members of the council? If not, I'll recognize the city manager for priority items. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. No priority items this evening. Likewise, the city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. And likewise, city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, okay. Mr. Mayor, I did work in um, <clears throat> Seattle for the National League of Cities uh, annual conference, and I received uh, an award uh, for the city, the Digital Survey Award, and we were number three in our category. So you can give us a round of applause for that. Um, I forgot to bring, I thought I had the award in my car, but it is not, and so I will present it officially to the manager at our next meeting. Thank you. Proceed with the agenda as uh, printed, and I'll read the heading of each one of the items. The consent agenda may be approved for a single vote. If an item is pulled, we'll discuss that later in the meeting. Uh, the first item, our approval of city council minutes. Item two of boards, committees, and commission attendance reports for the period July 1, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. Item three is the Human Relations Commission appointment, and I'll pull that item. Uh, item four is street and infrastructure acceptances. Item five is 2014 city council meeting schedule. Item seven is lease of non-residential property and contract for service with rebound alternatives for youth for nonprofit organization. Item eight is a mortgage loan servicing contract. Item nine is city of Durham employment and training 2012-2014 grant project ordinance number 14510. Item 10 is the amendment to the city of Durham's employment and training 2011-2013. Grant Project Ordinance, superseding Grant Project Ordinance number 14303. Item 11 is Church Street Parking Deck Repair Contract with Tendon Systems, LLC. Item 12 is License Agreement with Durham County Human Services Facility. Item 13 is Amendment to number 3 to the Strap Tire Disposal Recycling Contract. Item 14 is Amendments to the Passage of Vehicle for Hire Ordinance. Item 15 is City of Durham local priority list for transportation projects. Item 16 is contract FR2 Miss Lake water management facility for site repairs. Item 17 is ordinance amendment to section 70-51, 57, and 61 of the city code in part 15-102A and B of the city's fee schedule. Item 18 is ordinance amendment to provisions concerning unauthorized water and sewer use and tampering or damage to water and sewer infrastructure. Items 28, 23 through 28 are items that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings. Item 31 is Durham Housing Authority Board of Commissioners appointment. Item 32, I'm sorry, item 31 is the one that I'm pulling. Item 31 is the one we're pulling. Item 32 is a contract amendment with Carter Global Associates 
LRC Professional Services for additional consultant services for police. Entertain a motion for the approval of consent agenda items with the exception of item one. So moved. Item 31. So moved. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It no. passed the six to zero. Yeah. Three, it was 31 that I pulled, not, not three. On the general business agenda, public hearings, assessment and improvements. Item 23, mini assessment roll for Water Main on Ardmore Drive. Good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem, members of Council. I'm Marvin Williams, Director of the Public Works Department. Item 23 is a mini assessment roll for confirmation of the Water Main assessment on Ardmore Drive. The assessment was originally confirmed at the September 3rd, 2013 Council meeting. After confirmation, but within the 15 day limit for objection, the property owner at 1012 Ardmore Drive objected to her assessment based on hardship. Staff has reviewed the item and recommends that the City Council conduct the public hearing, receive public comments, re reconsider the water main assessment, assessment against 1012 Ardmore Drive, and confirm the assessment in the original amount with a 20 year pay period at 1% annually, as shown on the attached mini roll. This recommended action is in accordance with the City of Durham Financial Hardship Assessment Policy previously approved by Council. You've heard the recommendation by the administration. This is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. I would ask first for the comments by members of the Council. Uh, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on this item? Uh, this has been an assessment role for Water Main on Ardmore Drive. Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public wanted to speak. I will declare the public meeting to be closed. Matters back before the Council. Second. It's been proper moving second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? You close the vote? It passes six to zero. Item 24 is confirmation of assessment rolls for Water Main and Sewer Main on Wedgwood Lane. Once again, good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem, members of Council, Marvin Williams, Director of Public Works. Item 24 is to conduct a public hearing to confirm water and sewer assessment rolls for improvements that have been completed on Wedgwood Lane. Properties in the attached assessment rolls have, been, have benefited from these improvements, and the Public Works Department recommends that a public hearing be conducted and that the City Council adopt a resolution confirming each of the subject assessment rolls. Again, this is a public hearing. You've heard the staff report. Are there questions, comments by members of the Council? Uh, likewise, would ask, is there anyone in the public that wants to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect no one in the public asked to speak. I will try to public hearing to close my respect for Council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Item, sorry. Item 25, consolidated annexation item, Hope Crossing at 2800 Independence Avenue. Good evening. Pat Young with the Planning Department. Um, before you is the consolidated annexation, annexation item for a 0.29 acre. Uh, portion of a parcel located at 2800 Independence Avenue, which is just to the east of Junction Road uh, and within unincorporated Durham County. The applicant is Stewart Engineering on behalf of Habitat for Humanity, uh, who wishes to incorporate this property into a proposed Hope Pro Crossing 2 development, which will include 29 plus acres of land already within the city limits and immediately adjacent to the subject property. The comprehensive plan amendment and zoning map change to upzone this property are the following items on tonight's agenda. Uh, this action would annex the property into the city and apply an initial zoning of residential suburban 20 or RS20 on the subject property. Uh, staff recommends that the council approve the voluntary annexation and initial zoning uh, for 2800 Independence Avenue. Be happy to take any questions. Thank you. This is a public hearing. You've heard the staff report. Let me ask other questions. Recognize Councilman Moffitt. Yes, <coughs> Mr. Young, uh, do you want to address a notification? Thank you, Mr. Moffat. I, I had neglected to provide the uh, required certification. Uh, the, the item you just uh, heard the staff report on and all subsequent items have been uh, uh, provided notice in accordance with the provisions of law and our affidavits on file with the planning department to that effect. Thank you. Are there further questions, comments by the council? Is anyone in the public wants to speak on this item? This has been an annexation item. Uh, let the record reflect no one in the public asked to speak. I'll declare the public and be closed. Matter of fact, before council. It's been proper. Moved and second, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. I uh, moved item 26, comprehensive plan amendment, Hope Crossing 2A13000004. Good evening again, uh, Pat Young with the Planning Department. 
Uh, this case is Hope Crossing 2, A13-00004. Uh, the applicant is requesting an amendment of the future land use map from industrial and low density residential uh, to low medium density residential. And what this would allow is um, the proposed development of a 29.9 acre site uh, media, uh, as described in the previous case uh, near the intersection of Junction and Chorley Roads in East Durham. Um, the applicant is Stewart Engineering and th the proposed change would make the uh, future land use map consistent with the proposed development um, that's being requested. Uh, staff recommends approval of this request and the Planning Commission recommended approval of this case by a vote of 11 to 0 at their September 10th, 2013 meeting. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Again, this is a public hearing. You've heard the staff report. I would ask other questions by members of the council. Recognize Councilman Steve Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just on attachment two, could you point out to me where the uh, planned, the, the city owned land is, where the planned ec uh, additional fields would be? Is that to the, to the uh, southeast of the, of the existing field there? Mr. Young. Councilman Schull, it's my understanding that, that that would be kind of immediately to the, to the east. Immediately the to the east. Of the, of the subject site, that is city-owned property. Yeah, so I guess I'm saying that the, uh, the I know that the city-owned property is, is immediately to the east and there's an existing field there. And I know that we own land that uh, is potentially for additional fields. And uh, is that you know, still farther to the east and slightly south there with that green, that entire green patch there? That's my understanding. I, again, I can't speak to the level of design and specificity as yeah. someone maybe from Parks and Recreation could, but that, that is our understanding, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Shuler. Are there other questions, comments? Uh, if not, uh, I would ask are there comments from persons in the audience? And I know we have George Stancio. That's the sound to speak on the sign here. George Stanzial with Stuart. Um, I don't really have a presentation, just I'm here for questions. Also our um, Habitat Executive Director is also here with us. Just in answer to your question, Mr. Shul, uh, the, the, there's an extension of Midland Terrace that runs along the east side of the property uh, and that runs between this property and the park property. All right, any other questions? Anyone else in the public wants to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect there were no further questions, comments from the public. I'll declare the public will be closed. Matter of fact, before council. Second. We're proud to move a second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Move to item 27, zoning map change, Hope Crossing 2, Z13-00011. Thank you. Uh, good evening again. Um, zoning case 13-0011 is Hope Crossing 2. This is the companion zoning case to the conference of plan amendment case uh, that was just adopted. Um, it would change the current zoning designations, uh, of which there are six, primarily residential suburban designations and industrial light, uh, or IL, to the requested district of PDR, plan development residential 6.00. Uh, this re request proposes um, a residential subdivision for a maximum of 128 residential units. Uh, the development plan associated with this request includes commitments regarding dedication of right of way and uh, roadway improvements for adjacent roadways, including a left turn lane on, on Junction Road. Uh, graphically, the development plan commits to the general location of site access points, uh, four external access points and two internal access points, and the location of tree preservation areas. Um, staff determines that this request is consistent with a comprehensive plan based on the previous action by council and the Planning Commission recommended approval uh, on September 10th, 2013 by a vote of 11 to 0. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. You've heard the staff report. Again, are there questions by members of the council? Recognize Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When these new streets are constructed, does the standard require enough width for a bike lane? You can ask Bill Judge with transportation to address that question. Bill Judge with transportation. Uh, the internal neighborhood streets are designed sort of with the complete streets concepts so that there would not be exclusive bicycle lanes. They would share traffic designed for lower speeds. Midland Terrace is a future thoroughfare when it 
is designed and constructed, it would have bicycle lanes. Thank you. Is there any connectivity contemplated with the park? Uh, this is uh, actually in reference to what you were talking about earlier, Mr. Stanzial. Uh, is there any connectivity contemplated with the park at this point, and is that something that we want? There, not until Midland Terrace is constructed, um, if uh, there would be connectivity with the development of Midland Terrace and as well as the park property. Okay. So. Thank you. Uh, further questions about members of the council? Uh, if not, uh, again, this is a public hearing. Uh, George Stancio had signed up to speak on this item. Are there other persons who want to speak? Uh, let the record reflect that uh, Mr. Stancio chose not to speak. Does anyone else want to speak on this item? If not, uh, declare the public hearing to be closed. The matter's back before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Moved item 28, consolidated annexation item, Mineral Springs Road Residential. Uh, good, e good evening again, members of, members of council. Uh, Pat Young with the Planning Department. This is the consolidated annexation item associated with the proposed Mineral Springs Road Residential Development. Uh, which, if approved, would allow up to 33 single-family residences and, and uh, could be, would be developed on approximately 9.09 .09 acres of property currently uh, within the unincorporated Durham County but surrounded by the city limits on all sides. Um, the three items before you are utility extension agreement, which would allow the extension of city water and uh, wastewater services to the property, um, a voluntary petition for annexation, which was submitted by the property owners for the site, uh, the Budget and Management Services Department did conduct a fiscal impact analysis uh, and service delivery analysis for this property, in which projected uh, that the estimated revenues from this project would exceed expenditures following annexation. And finally, it would be an initial zoning, which would apply uh, requested plan development residential zoning of 4.140 um, units per acre on the subject property. Uh, and that is consistent with the adopt a comprehensive plan in terms of the future land use designation. Uh, staff recommends approval and the uh, Planning Commission recommended approval for the initial zoning at its September 10th meeting by a vote of 11 to 0. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. You've heard the staff report. Uh, it's a public hearing. The public hearing is open. Recognize Councilman Cotati. Uh, there's one person that has signed up to speak on this item, uh, Gerard Eddins. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? All right, Mr. Edens, if you could just state your name and address, please. Uh, Jared Edens, Edens Land Corp, 2314 South Miami Boulevard in Durham. I don't have much to add to what uh, Pat presented in the report. Um, again, nine acres for approximately 33 lots. Uh, my clients feel it'll conform nicely to the surrounding Ashton Hall development. Uh, it'll be very similar to what's currently existing on all three sides. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Do you recognize Councilwoman Katati? Thank you, Mayor. Excuse me, I had several questions that the Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee had raised and I didn't see them as committed elements, so I guess I'll ask staff um, if they can remind us of any committed elements and then Mr. Edens, if you could comment on them. Essentially, BPAC suggested um, a text commitment to create pedestrian stub outs, a text commitment to create bike peg connection on Mineral Springs Road, uh, bike frontage lanes on Mineral Springs. Yeah, and asphalt widening as well. Staff, can you comment on that? Sure, so um, we evaluated the request from the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Commission as we always do. Uh, none of these requests were ordinance based, so we passed them on to the applicant and, and none of these proffers were made, so. Uh, but I thought that we had a, that we were proffering a pedestrian connection out to Mineral Springs Road. I believe we are, graphically. Okay, I apologize. M Mr. Judge reminded me that the right-of-way was committed for number three, so the right-of-way for the additional, and, and I apologize, Mr. Edens and the applicant. The right-of-way for number three is a committed element uh, to dedicate the additional right-of-way for the future addition of bike lanes, and there is a text com commitment that would al allow for connectivity to Mineral Springs Road from the property for pedestrian purposes. Recognize Councilman Shul. Had you finished Councilman Goddard? Recognize Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I appreciate that right away. I think that's important in the long run, and I think it's great y'all are going to proffer that. 
Um, explain to me a little bit, uh, uh, Pat, the, the memo says the cumulative net gain to the city at build out is $165,000, but the financial projection is so much higher, continu continuing cumulative net gain to the city. I, I never see the $165,000 on that chart. Are, are you, do you know what I'm talking about there? Are you with me? I, I, I think I do, Councilman Shul. Um, I'm not sure that I could um, speak comprehensively to the methodology used by Budget Management Services uh, in that regard. Yeah. Um, but I, I am confident it's something uh, they've looked at carefully and it's a, it's a, a sound model that yeah. comprehensively evaluates impacts over yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, I, it looked to me like the the actual cumulative net gain to the city over time is substantially more than that. I was just, that, that figure was, I guess, in the memo. I, to be honest, I read it a few days ago and I can't remember exactly where I saw it, but I, I, I never could find it on the spreadsheet again. Um, I, I certainly can follow up with you uh, through the manager's office offline on, on how they're getting to that number. Um, I, I believe it, it is for some stipulated and limited time period, maybe five years from build out. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is too. All right. But, but it, is, okay. it, is, you, you it is positive almost immediately following annexation. You, you don't need to get back with me. I'm sure I'm just obsessing about something I don't need to obsess about. But I thank think you. it's an important question and we want to make sure you all yeah. can, can I, evaluate I, I, I mean, I'm point. satisfied with it, with the general, you know, what it shows on the spreadsheet. So, um, Mr. Edens, uh, this plan indicates an additional three students will be generated for Durham Public Schools. Uh, would the applicant, uh, would you be willing to make a donation of $500 per student for a total of $1,500 to Durham Public Schools? And unfortunately, my client's not here to, um, to run that question past. Um, if it's, a, if it's on, being honest, if it's a deal breaker, then, then yes, I think that's a possibility. I just, it's it's I just not hate, a deal breaker. I, I hate to commit that kind of money for, sure. my, for my client. Yeah, I, I don't so. even believe it legally can be a deal breaker, right, and it's certainly true. not a deal breaker, but uh, it's, 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 let's just say it's frequently done, and uh, I hope you'll take that up with your client. Okay, I, I can after the meeting for sure. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, are there other questions, comments? Uh, if not, is there anyone else in the public that wants to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else asked to speak. I will try to put in be closed. Matters back before the council. Second. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Before we move to the item that had been um, pulled, I want to recognize we have some Boy Scouts in the back. I don't know if anyone recognized them before we came. If you mind standing, just tell us what troop you're with and who you are. What troop are you with? Well, welcome to our meeting. We've got a very abbreviated meeting, but hope you enjoyed what you saw. Great. Thank you. Um, item 31 was pulled, the Durham Housing Authority, Steve Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins, you have three minutes. Steve Hopkins, 654 North Hardy Street, Apartment B, Durham, North Carolina. Mr. Mayor and City Council members, it saddened me to have to come before you with such a disturbing concern about one of your members. Complete disregard for not only a citizen who would be willing to serve on one of your many citizens' board, but for the process by which you conduct business a young lady with whom I have the honor of working with, whom I have come to respect her honesty, her commitment and dedication to working with the homeless, low income and disabled citizens in this county and city. A lady whom I have, <coughs> whom when I heard about the opening for the Durham Housing Authority Board, I encouraged her to apply because of the work that she's done around affordable housing and with the opening door strategic plan. She is so bright. It's a perfect match for me, to me. And just what the board needs. And I say that because not only was I a member of this board, but most importantly, I was a resident member of this board. 
So I know what the issues the board has and believe that Ms. Foster can help it through these issues and give it a new energy plus young, youthful perspectives. Now, to what concerns me most, Councilman Shules has blocked her appointment not once, but twice. Why? He says it's because she doesn't have experience working with tax credit development nor management skills. He doesn't know her that well to make those comments. And I say, let the work that she's done speak for itself. Now, to my real concerns. A, Councilman Shula knew about the upcoming opening on the board before any of you or me. So if he had a certain kind of person in mind, he should have had that person apply. B, there is a process by which the council is supposed to go through re-advertisement board appointments. C, if what I said in B is true, then Councilman Brown, Moffitt, and Katati should have known better and not allowed the process to be continued. D, if, is this the message the council wants to send out to, the re to its residents? that any member of council can change the process at any time, that only uh, you want people who are handpicked to serve on these many boards, that if, a, that if a group wants to control everything, that we don't have any choice but to go along with it. The action taken and the fact that all four of the white members of council voted to extend the deadline and the fact that three of them are PA members also concerns me. C Councilman Shaw, Ms. Hopkins. Uh, you want me to continue? I just give my you note. You could give it to the, to the clerk, okay. if you don't mind. Thank you. But thank you for your time. Sure. Uh, I, we, we, we can take an action on this. The only comment I would make, and this is for, for the public, it, it has been generally the practice of this council that if any council member requests a deferral on an appointment, uh, we grant that. Uh, at least that's been the process since I've been mayor. And I don't think we've ever not granted that. I was not here at the meeting when it happened, but that's generally the process we have. If, if a council member raises a question and asks for a deferral on an appointment, generally that, that's granted. But I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, if there are no further comments, I entertain a motion on an item. It's been proper move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Will you close the vote? It passes six to zero. Thank you. Are there any other items to come before the council? If not, the meeting's adjourned at 7.30 p.m. Thank you.